So harnesses have multiple uses, right? So with little puppies, pre-teething puppies, right? Then the harness is a management tool. They're not ready to learn to walk politely on the leash and collar. They're too young. I can't do my leash pressure work yet. So if I'm going to walk you around, I walk you on a harness. That way, if you pull, at least you're not pulling on a collar. You're not desensitizing your neck. So it's a management tool. I get you from point A to point B until you're old enough to learn to walk politely on the leash. Right? And that way, they haven't rehearsed a whole bunch of dragging me around on a flat collar, which is going to make my leash pressure work harder. Right? If we're using it as a motivation building tool, it can stay in the game for a long time. So if you wanted to go on and do sport work with your dog, most you're not doing this with people's pet dogs typically. You're not going to do restrain play, hold a dog, get the dog cranked up on a harness, make them really fired up, let them dra drag you around. That's probably not going to be beneficial for them on average. You never know. You may have a crazy pet dog client. I had some very pet dog, pet dog clients that started out like, I just want my dog to be polite. And they're like, whoa, what's all that? I want to do that. Forget it. That, that the polite dog's out. I want that. So I've had some clients over the years that t turned into dog trainers for sure, right? But most of them are not, this is not going to be productive for them. You're not going to do it. We do restrained recalls with pet dogs all the time, though. We teach them about the harness so we can hold them back and do beginning recall work. Because same thing, recall and building motivation for the handler. We do them in, in, during engagement like we did with the puppy. Those are super useful. So same principle, right? But restrained play, probably not as much.